guys, it's Christmas. So I wanna slow things down a bit and just chill out. I've got a cozy sweater, some eggnog, some royalty-free Christmassy music playing. I wanna sit here by the tree and just talk about the holiday. This is my favorite time of year. Even though it's stressful and cold and chaotic, I love it. Here's how much I love it. Every year since 2011, I've made a special Christmas video, a mini Christmas movie. I just finished shooting the new one last night, and that's in addition to making this video. And yes, more than once I have pulled an all-nighter on December 23rd to get the video done on time while my family shouts at me, why are you doing this to yourself? What I'm saying is, even though it makes my life more difficult, I love this tradition. It's my weird way of celebrating how much I enjoy this time of year. And in particular, how much I enjoy Christmas movies. So, let's talk about them. This year, like every year, debates rage across the internet about what is and is not a Christmas movie. Everyone has different criteria. Mine is pretty simple. If Christmas is an essential part of the narrative, and the movie is about traditional Christmas things, then it's a Christmas movie. If Christmas is mostly just a thing happening in the background, then it's a movie set at Christmas. So the way I program my holiday viewing, I put the Shane Black movies, which are set at Christmas but not really about Christmas, in early December, and I save It's a Wonderful Life and Home Alone for closer to the actual day. But really, this isn't important because it's all subjective and what we think is and isn't a Christmas movie doesn't really matter. What I think is way more interesting is what these movies are about and how they deal with the holiday. And if we're going to get into that, we need to get into what Christmas itself actually means. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's the iconic speech that Linus gives in A Charlie Brown Christmas. And while he's quoting the Bible, he's not saying the point of Christmas is worshiping Jesus. It's that the holiday began as a small religious celebration, in which, on a dark night, people came together and helped each other out in a display of kindness and generosity. Now, I am not at all religious, so for me, the holiday's Christian origin is basically just a good story with a good message. And it's that core idea, the hopeful light in the darkness of winter, peace on earth and goodwill toward men, is what it's all about, even now, thousands of years later. But in those thousands of years, Christmas has evolved. It's combined Christian traditions with pre-Christian traditions, with pagan traditions, with entirely secular traditions. A key part of Christmas is the straight-up insane mythology of Santa Claus, which combines a real-life bishop with the Germanic god Woden. Basically, Christmas is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and I'm fascinated by the ways in which Christmas movies deal with that. See. Christmas is pretty much the largest shared cultural event of the year. And for storytellers, it gives them a universal experience to tap into, something the vast majority of people can relate to. To use the classic Roger Ebert line, movies are a machine that generate empathy. And most of us can empathize with the process of getting a Christmas tree, or really wanting this one big Christmas present, or dealing with extended family visiting during the holidays, or just generally being stressed as hell trying to deal with all the Christmas shit. And Christmas itself can serve a variety of narrative functions. It's a way to get characters together, to force them to travel. I mean, the whole reason John McClane gets stuck in Nakatomi Plaza is because he's going to his wife's Christmas party. But dig into the thematic purpose of Christmas, and it gets more interesting. There's the way Tim Burton, or especially Shane Black, use it, as a bright, colorful contrast to the darkness of the story and characters. Black has talked about this a lot, how he uses it to enhance the sadness and loneliness of his characters. It's a holiday about being with people that you love, and for people who are alone, that can be a pretty rough time. The holiday is built on the story of people going out of their way to display great generosity, and that is its most enduring idea. People coming together, usually as a family, to give to and help each other. Many of its most enduring stories, from A Christmas Carol to How the Grinch Stole Christmas, are of people growing and becoming selfless and kind. The idea of Christmas as a time of great positive change and grand open-hearted gestures is baked into our culture. Christmas has itself become a genre, with its own tropes and iconography. It's like westerns. Side note, where are all the Christmas westerns? And I could do a whole video on how some of the most classic Christmas stories get reimagined and remixed. A Christmas Carol has been reinterpreted more times than 
say Robin Hood, and usually to better results. It's been countless movies, but some of them have been musicals, or animated, or starring Muppets. It's been reworked into a Xena episode set before Christmas even existed. It's been used in a metatextual way in a Doctor Who Christmas special, in which the Doctor literally Christmas carols a guy. And while the general legend of Santa Claus stays the same, it has countless variations. In Elf, Santa exists in a very simple, storybook-esque world. In Arthur Christmas, Santa has a sort of sci-fi military operation. The Santa Claus adds a pretty bizarre piece to the mythology. The Nightmare Before Christmas puts Santa in a multiverse containing other holiday avatars. This isn't dissimilar from the way Christmas songs have been reinterpreted and reimagined over time. It's like Bing Crosby and David Bowie reworking Little Drummer Boy. Or, uh, that time Justin Bieber did it. Christmas movies use the holiday in a lot of different ways and deal with countless different aspects of it. But what I don't see very often is movies engaging with what the holiday actually means. And I'm always surprised how few Christmas movies deal with this. Like, It's a Wonderful Life is a masterpiece, but Christmas mostly just exists there as the time for grand gestures of great generosity. To get into stories about what Christmas means, we have to turn to television. I'm a sucker for Christmas episodes. I'm always excited when one of my favorite shows does one. And this year, I am genuinely pissed off that Doctor Who is skipping its annual Christmas special. It's a tradition. Every year, I rewatch all the OC Christmaka episodes. The other day, my friend Andy introduced me to the Christmas episode of the Rambo cartoon, which is really a thing that exists. Mostly, Christmas episodes exist as traditions themselves. Like, hey, it's that time of year. Let's do a nice holiday story. But the TV episode that dives the deepest into what Christmas means is the season two episode of Community, Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. Give me the snow. Light up the trees, deck every hall, and while you can see... I'm gonna spoil it all here, so pause the video and go watch it if you haven't already. I'll be here when you come back. We learn late in the episode that the whole story happens because Abed's most important Christmas ritual is taken away. His mother cancels their annual tradition of getting together to watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and it sends him into a hallucinatory breakdown. To him, this is what Christmas was. This ritual and he ends up on a quest to find the meaning of Christmas. He finds it, and it is super, super on brand for a thing written by Dan Harmon. The meaning of Christmas is the idea that Christmas has meaning, and it can mean whatever we want. For me, it used to mean being with my mom. Now it means being with you guys. After this episode aired, a friend of mine who was raised Jewish and never celebrated Christmas texted me, and this is a direct quote, as a non-Gentile, that was the first time I've ever had the meaning of Christmas explained to me in a way that made sense. Christmas is a holiday built on the idea of coming together and helping each other during the darkest, coldest time of year. It's the crazy notion that the longest, coldest, darkest nights can be the warmest and brightest. But it exists because of rituals. Some are universal, like putting up a Christmas tree, but everyone, or at least every family, has their own specific ones. It's why I really like The Night Before, which is entirely about how the important part of Christmas is the silly rituals, and how much they mean to us. My Christmas experience has been nearly the same for my whole life, spending it with my immediate family at my parents' old house in upstate New York. As a kid, I would constantly listen to the cassette tape of Bing Crosby's White Christmas, and will forever have an attachment to the song Christmas in Killarney, despite my mom complaining about its absurd portrayal of Irish culture. I'm handing you no blarney, the likes you've never known, is Christmas in Killarney. We do the same thing every year. Our Christmas Eve party where my dad lights the plum pudding on fire. We take giving gifts to each other extremely seriously. After Christmas dinner, we chill out and watch the Doctor Who Christmas special, which again, I'm mad isn't happening this year. For years, our weirdest ritual was making a new version of the same short film, in which I rushed downstairs Christmas morning, only to have my dad topple the tree onto me, then shoot me with a Nerf gun. This movie was his idea. And in a full circle way that I'm sure Dan Harmon appreciates, Christmas movies and stories about the rituals we perform at Christmas have then become Christmas rituals themselves. Like rewatching Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas every year has become a ritual for me. To quote Stevie Wonder, 
All these things and more, that's what Christmas means to me. For me, the holiday is defined by these rituals, and I think this is what that community episode captures so well. The holiday itself doesn't have meaning on its own. We have to give it meaning. Anyone, regardless of actual religious upbringing, can enjoy a version of Christmas. And as crazy as it sounds, the other Christmas story that best captures that idea is the South Park episode Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. Howdy ho! Yes, a cartoon about an anthropomorphic turd is one of the best explorations of the modern idea of Christmas. The main story in the episode is about Kyle being ostracized because he's Jewish and doesn't celebrate Christmas. And then Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Poo, uniting everyone through a shared understanding of what the holiday can be. This is really weird and kind of gross, but I think it also says something profound about how Christmas has evolved. The episode begins with the kids rehearsing the nativity play, as in the original Christian idea of Christmas. And it's from this that Kyle feels excluded. But what he can connect to is Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, a new, entirely secular avatar for the holiday who doesn't care about your religious beliefs, just how much fiber is in your diet. The idea here is that despite its origins, Christmas doesn't have to be about Jesus. There is a totally secular version of it that literally anyone can take part in. And honestly, that's way closer to my own version of Christmas. Just, mine has less poop. Now, I recognize that much of my fondness for Christmas is because I was lucky enough to have a whole lot of great, idyllic Christmases during my life, in an old house with lots of snow and a family that I love and get along with. But obviously, not everyone's experiences are like that, and I don't bemoan anyone for not enjoying this season or this holiday. But that's why I appreciate these two episodes so much. Because they're saying that Christmas can be for everyone, and everyone can enjoy and experience it in a different way. And while Christmas is a holiday built on traditions, Christmas movies and episodes themselves have become a tradition. One small touch I appreciate in Home Alone is how various Christmas classics are always playing on the TVs. The Grinch, Miracle on 34th Street, It's a Wonderful Life. It's the movie acknowledging the long tradition that it's taking part in. Anyway, as is my tradition, I have to spend the rest of the day scrambling to wrap up everything before heading upstate tomorrow. I still have gifts to buy and a short film to edit, I'm stressed and exhausted, but I'm having a great time, because this time of year just makes me happy. So if you've stuck with me this far, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for watching these videos and allowing me to make a living making them. And uh, stay tuned for some fun stuff next year. It's time to head home for the holidays, and if you're like me, that means a whole lot of sitting around and doing pretty much nothing. But while you're laying on the couch in a near vegetative state, you should entertain yourself with Curiosity Stream, our sponsor for this video. Curiosity Stream is a streaming service from the founder of the Discovery Channel, where you can watch over 2,000 documentaries from some of the world's best filmmakers, including some exclusive originals. It's available worldwide on the web app, Roku, iOS, Kindle, and a ton more platforms. So this year, instead of watching more bad made-for-TV Christmas movies, sign up for Curiosity Stream and learn something. You can get your first 30 days totally free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash patrickhwillems and use the promo code patrickhwillems. So like my name and the name of the channel. I have an announcement, or it's an announcement if you don't follow me on social media because I mentioned it there last week, but we have a second channel. It's up, it's out now, it's called Patrick Willems Presents, and this is now going to be the home for all new short films and behind the scenes stuff, and basically everything that's not a video essay. The video essays are gonna stay right here 
on this channel. And it is where the 2018 Christmas short film that I mentioned earlier in this video is going to be premiering in a few days. So you should go subscribe now so you're ready as soon as that drops. Uh, really, all I want for Christmas this year is for you to subscribe to Patrick Willems Presents. Uh, that would make me really happy. And it doesn't cost anything. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. You're just going to get more entertainment made by me for free. And, uh, and if you don't subscribe, I hope you get coal in your stocking. Because that's a thing that happens, I think. Um, anyway, that's all. Uh, Merry Christmas. And go subscribe. Good.